so we're not having all about fruit day this year 2020 it's june the second right yeah it's june the second so i'm gonna uh, do a little virtual tour for everybody who can't come today um let's go let's start right here we've been picking strawberries for about three weeks this is the early go variety and i really like these little terraced gardens where we put the strawberries in and you get um You get a lot of fruit. The only thing about these, you have to keep the plants spaced pretty far. Right, Jeannie? Right. Right. So you have to keep the plants spaced so they're, they're nice and airy and the, and the fruits can ripen. You don't want to get them all jammed together. So we actually pull plants out of here in the spring. And the seascape uh, variety is up there. Uh, Loxman, go over there and pick one of those and show everybody. You see that one right under that leaf? Yeah, yeah, you got it. There it is. Watch it. Don't pull the whole plant up. There you go. Yeah. Great. This is apple mint. And this is very harvestable right now. I put this in a dehydrator. And for in a couple of days, I don't care about the stem so much, but I, I dry all the leaves. I rake them off like that and crush them up. And it makes a really uh, delicious, delicious tea. These flowers behind you are... The purple pavement rose they are they have a big rose hip in august and there's a rose hip forming right there can we get a little closer yeah there you go and then the flowers smell divine well i don't see a brand new one anymore. let's keep on going ah this is foxy Foxy pavement rose, rose hip, and then it's pink. It's not as deep pink as the purple pavement. And maybe up north, the purple pavement gets more purple because I know the hips do. Uh, lavender looks really good in these little boxes. And here's a sweet Charlie strawberry. Very good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's so good. Especially with hot weather. You know, it was raining last week a lot. So I was wondering if we'd get any fruit because sometimes when the rain comes, you get a lot of botrytis in the fruit and rotty fruit and things like that. But we've had a great, great harvest. So it's been really good. Um, let's get real close here and look at the box, help, help, box huckleberry. This is a little native plant. And you can see the little... Uh, the little fruits ripening on it. Little, see? They're like a blueberry. They're a vaccinium. They're native to Virginia, actually. So. Make a nice ground cover. <laughs> over here, and they love this kind of soil that has lots of um, organic matter in it. And these are cranberries. And there's the little flowers. So we will get, we will get cranberries on these. Moving right along. These are lingonberries, and the lingonberries, I'm looking for some flowering or fruiting. Ah, there's some fruit right there. Still green. Again, they're a vaccinium, so they like, uh, they like this nice peaty, lots of uh, pine bark mulch kind of soil. Here's some right here, look at that cluster. And now we are at the weeping mulberry. What a beautiful tree, huh? And if we go like this, you can see the, the fruit. And I take my umbrella. That one's ripe right there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I take my umbrella and I put it like under here and give these a little shake. And, um, Usually the ripe ones fall down, and then I collect them all. And it's a beautiful plant, and locks, oh look, there's somebody in there. See those legs? Check out those legs. <laughs> there we go. That's a really nice way to pick them, too. Oh, beautiful. 
beautiful. So this is Prince William Juneberry, and look at the fruit, huh? And the Juneberries, are they taste like blueberries. Basically, you just take them off like this, and then, oh, very good. Mm, great flavor. Pretty little plant, doesn't get real tall. And we're on to the next. This is a Nanking cherry. This one's gotten quite big because it doesn't have a pollinator next to it. So uh, it grows a lot of greenery because it doesn't have any or little, very little fruit. We have a, we're gonna come to another one in a few minutes and I'll show you the fruit because we have some that are together up in that area. But we're going this way. And this is a Winkler filbert. filbert. It's an American filbert. It's self-fertile. It has large nuts. And this year, ah, you can see they're just forming the nuts right there. Cool. There's some there. Now on the uh, on the opposite spectrum is the European uh, filbert or hazelnut, and they get much larger. This one is called Tonda di Cafani. It's an Italian of variety. And look at this, guys. We just finished shipping today. That's your three gallon uh, pot in there, like a tree. And then these are the smaller plants, like the four inch and the three inch, and those are gallon boxes down there. This is triple crown blackberry, and it's Thornton no thorns and you can see it's flowering now and in about 30 days we'll have more blackberries than we know what to do with. Let's go over here in the shade. I see some wine berries. So these wine berries will open up pretty soon and there'll be these little red jewel sparkly fruits. Very tasty. These naturalize in the shade. And with this mulch, they'll come up and then they'll uh, cascade over and they'll tip. Their, their tops will tip and then you'll get the uh, plant spreading out. So that's why it's here and it's coming over this way and it spreads out. Another plant that spreads out nicely is the cut leaf elderberry. And the cut leaf is in bloom right now. Very pretty leaf. And you'll, you see that there's going to be a lot, of, a lot of harvest on this guy. So we'll get a lot of elderberries. Very important thing to have at this time. There's some more um, filberts coming on this plant. This plant is susceptible to Eastern filbert blight. It's probably Cassina. And uh, so it's pretty much on its way out of here. We'll probably put in variety like Jefferson or Theta. It's the first time I've looked at the camera. Hi there. So, uh, there's the little fruits there. They'll get to be big nuts, like me. And this is a tree-type Juneberry, and it was full of fruit. Um, but it's too close to the woods, and the squirrels have eaten it all, and so have the cedar waxwing. We have some fennel growing here, basically because there's some predator insects that like to uh, use fennel as, as part of whatever, and they in turn um, eat a psyllid uh, that is pretty bad on our persimmons and curls the end of the leaves of the persimmons. And so, uh, so Dan has put these out in different places. We have a bunch of different native plants that, that these um, uh, integrated pest management insects will, will help out with with the different maladies that we have in the orchard. Oh, that smells good and plenty. This is a, an American filbert and it's all purple leaf. Very pretty. And there's some fruit. You can see the fruit in the sun here. And American filberts, again, are smaller bushes. This is quite handsome. Hopefully, we'll have lots of these to sell one day. This little guy that uh, we need to uh, uh, get the weeds away, this is a weeping persimmon. And it has uh, some flowers on it, so it will set fruit this year.
another persimmon. This is Kyun Sun Bansi. Very pretty shiny leaves, and you can see all the fruit that it's, it's going to have. Actually, it's already set. There's the little fruit. If you came close, you can see the little fruit in there. And we'll maybe we'll have persimmon day. Hopefully, we'll have that in the fall. Come on, let's go. This is a dwarf peach from China, and it's called Flory. F L O R Y. It has double pink flowers. And then it has these little white fruits. Uh, they'll get maybe twice that size. And they're freestone and they taste like Bella Georgia. This is one of the prettiest plants that we have. When it blooms, it's just really, really pretty. It has double pink blossoms, very fragrant, very beautiful little plant. This is a Salavatsky pomegranate. And here are the flowers. Uh, this one hasn't opened up yet. They're just about ready to open. This one looks like it's set its fruit. There's also a fennel under this guy, but very beautiful plant. Rivals any pyracantha that you might want to grow in your yard. This is really pretty. Um, and, and this is the patio peach also. And the one I showed you first was a seedling of this one. This one's been here for about 25 years. This is the Acai Dwarf Mulberry. We're testing this guy out and he does have fruit this year. Can you, can you get a picture in there? Let me see if any of these are ready to come off. Oh, there went one, I missed it. Here we go. So yeah, these are, uh, these are the Acai Mulberry. They're nice round and fat mulberries. And this is a dwarf tree. This doesn't get over maybe eight, nine feet tall. These are the ed edible honeysuckle. They're also called hascat. And the edible honeysuckle, it has been ripe for about three weeks. And here's a fruit here. Oop. And there's the fruit right there. And these are very tart, almost wine tasting. Delicious. Though. Quite delicious, yeah. Very full of antioxidants. Yeah, very good I know food. they're very popular in Japan. You can see I've been picking a lot of these. There's a lot more usually, but I've been picking these for a few weeks. But there they are again. Alrighty, let's keep going. This is a hops vine. And the hops, this is Cascade hops, and it's just coming up this pole. Pretty soon it'll cover the whole pole. They get really, they really grow in one year. They die back every winter, they come back every spring. And then you get the hip, um, the hops, and you harvest the hops and you have a good flavoring for beer. This is a little dwarf persimmon tree that actually has a fruit in the fall, but it's too astringent to eat until spring. So it's like a little dried date in the spring. This is called princess persimmon. And this is an, another, um, Na uh, Asian persimmon. This is called Smith's Best. And J. Russell Smith, well, if you look at our persimmon uh, video, I talk about this one in, in there. So I'm just going to stay, stay here for just a second to show you that it's full of fruit again this year, as it is every year. Uh, very beautiful little small Asian persimmon tree. This big tree we're going under is Tecumseh persimmon, and we also talked about that um, oh look, here's a uh, here's a Celeste fig, and we got a little bit of a late frost, but you can see there's you see the fruit on there. See, there's lots of fruit coming, so we'll have a, a big August crop on the Celeste, and we planted the Celeste right against the greenhouse because this is the south side, keeps the wind off of it in the winter. And that's how we get it through the winter up here in zone seven. Juneberry. This one's called Success. And these, uh, you can see how much fruit is on this. And I can hear a cedar wax wing. Can you hear that sound? Up there eating the, <laughs> the berries. They really like them. They come in droves here. But and look, I still have plenty for me to, to eat and to harvest. Uh, this is called Success. And this year we'll have this available in the fall. So it's, it's great that we'll be selling it. Go right under here because there's so many fruit. Yeah, I hear 
Thank you. And this is this is the Regent Juneberry. It's another bush type Juneberry, and again, just full of fruit, ready to harvest. And again, the way I like to do them is, is pick a whole bunch at once, and then you just pop them in your mouth. Anybody? Anyone? All right, there you go. Whoops, you got them? You like them? That does taste good all together. There we go. And uh, here we have methley plum. This will be ready in about a month. Uh, we didn't thin it. We should have because there's, I mean, they're still going to be delicious, but there's like a, just a, a few too many on the branch. They should be about uh, two or three inches apart. Oh, and look at this. We've got some black lace elderberry over here that are in the pots for sale. And this is a new variety called uh, Laced Up. Laced Up. Thank you. I was going to say stitched up. And that's not right. And you can see they're just about ready to flower. Oh, yeah, they are flowering over there. Can you get that picture? See it? So I'll be getting those pictures for the catalog soon. All right, let's keep going here. This is a prickly pear, hardy prickly pear cactus. The uh, pads can be used in like uh, south, southwest string beans. You can slice them up and grill them. And also it has a red, a yellow, beautiful yellow rose-like flower and then a uh, red, followed by a red fruit in the fall. And right behind it is, this is O'Neill blueberry. And you can see it's starting to ripen. And we better get a net on these pretty soon or we're not gonna get a berry. This whole row is Rika blueberry. This is the only O'Neill in the row. And this right here, oh, this is a little uh, scare tape tactic, you know, for the birds. <coughs> right here, is hardy kiwi. This is the Anna kiwi or the Ananas nanya. And here are all the fruits. And I mean, there's a lot of fruit. Can you see that in there? See all the fruit? And they'll be ripe to eat. They'll be ripe to eat in September. And let's go over here. This is Carlos muscadine grape. And it hasn't bloomed yet. It's just about ready to set its fruit. So even though a young vine, it's just full of fruit. Right next to it is a southern home grape. And the southern home has some vinifera in it. So it has a very distinct leaf. Whereas this is the rotunda, rotunda folia, which is like the from the uh, Carlos. So very different leaf. So this is a grape problem that when it rains a lot you get and this will transfer onto the bunches and it can rot but make a mummy fruit out of the bunches but this is called black rot and these little freckle looking things have fruiting bodies that are surrounding uh, they're a, like a black outline and they go uh when the rain comes they spore out go into the water and then come down on your bunches so grapes that get this muscadines don't get this but grapes that do, we usually, um, instead of spraying for them, we usually just bag the grapes. Now here's a grape cluster that's um, already been infected. So we'll probably just not deal with that. And when we get, the, when we get all these bagged, um, ooh, it was a bad year for this guy. He's very susceptible. This is a, one of um, Clifford Amber's uh, wine varieties, similar to Norton or Cynthiana. Let's keep going. This is a little dwarf cherry, and it's a sweet cherry. And what's bad about sweet cherries is, is very uh, evident this year because of our wet weather. Uh, some people do quite well with these. Of course, that's a nice, whoop, that one's got brown rot. So that's what happens when you get a lot of rain. Um, the sour cherry, on the other hand, is, is much easier to grow. And let's go see, a, let's see. These are hardy Chicago figs right here. Again, they're planted so that the wind hits that greenhouse. One of my favorite herbs is spearmint. And again, I dry these just like the apple mint and I probably make about a gallon of dried tea every year. So I always have tea year round. If you turn the camera, you can see the cherries uh, on, the, uh, on the Sam. That's the Sam, that's the Kristen cherry. 
And then right here are more kiwis. And let's go over to the uh, North Star cherry. So North Star looks like it's just about ready to pick. You still have some yellow blush, so we can wait a little longer. Um, and then we'll start picking these. Pretty much every year we can count on the North Star for a lot of fruit. This is the Shangri-La mulberry. I've had this here for years, so it's gotten to be quite big. Um, here's a good, that's about the size of the fruit. Um, and they can get larger. Nice fat berry, big leaves. Anybody see a big fruit anywhere? And I had these in fruit salad this morning. They're really great. They're delicious with good, good home, uh, home raised milk. This is a um, Rappahannock pawpaw, and we had a late frost this year, and they got hurt. I don't see a lot of fruit on this fellow, and he was loaded last year. So I think that late frost did, did affect him. Looking for a fruit, looking for a fruit. Well, shucks. Let's keep going, and I want to show you the white gold cherry. Whoa. Look at this, Jeannie. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm, they're already good. White gold. Really nice. I don't know what Dan's doing in here. <laughs> Interesting, Dan. He's got a bunch of water in here. Oh, Dan is, uh, takes care of the orchard along with me. And he tries all kinds of things. I'm not sure what this is. We'll have to ask him. Mm -hmm. Let's go on down. So this was a uh, just a quart pot that I planted. So when people get little small plants from us, don't think you can't plant them. It's, 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 I guess I planted it last July and it's, uh, it's come out and it's doing just fine. That's probably slug that got on there one night and ate some of the leaves. And then gooseberries. Can you see those? And they'll be ripe in about two weeks. They'll turn red. But that's a gooseberry plant. I think this is Glendale. Don't show anybody the fuzzy kiwi. So let's go over to that. And you can see that this got frosted. And hopefully we have some fruit. Yes, we do. Can you see that fruit that's formed? And this is the Elmwood fuzzy kiwi. Oh, good, the Gumi. So that's the Gumi fruit. You can see all the red fruits there. These are delicious and they're really good in uh, like a fruit salad or even a green salad with vinaigrette. Yum. This is emerald blueberry, kind of not supposed to grow here. It's a uh, Florida berry, but you can see that it's starting, it's starting to ripen. A very pretty bush, lots of big fruit. And this is Balamer Sal. Just look at all the flowers on it. Spectacular. We may have to have a um, pomegranate festival at the, at the, in October. And uh, this is Harrow Diamond Peach. You can see we didn't get much set on this, on this plant, but it's an early peach. Oh yeah, this is Comfrey. Brings a lot of minerals from deep into the earth and brings it up here available for other trees. And uh, also, you take the leaves and make a poultice if you have a hurt, right? Or even a sprain or a break. So it's a, it's a great medicinal herb. Oh, look, some... Uh... Now this Nanking cherry came up all by itself. And you can see the fruits there. And they are small, very red, very tart, and very good. These aren't quite ripe. Mm, still good. This is the Proc American persimmon. You can see it's just finished blooming and it's starting to set up. It's well, actually, it is blooming. Lots of lots of bloom. And the Proc has a very early fruit here. It's kind of from uh, uh, almost around the Niagara Peninsula, so it ripens here in late August. Um, one of our first to ripen. 
this is Trent Berry, and this will be uh, ripe later, and it is like a huckleberry. And just loaded, I mean really loaded. You get a lot of fruit off. This is only one plant, too. This is a, just a canina rose bush, but under it is a volunteer uh, Juneberry, and just look how pretty the fruit is. Isn't that great? It just can I think the birds must have landed here and then they put the seed out. Rosa Yanka persimmon is, is pretty um, reliable. And again, this is Rosa Yanka and you can see all the flowers that it's, uh, it's gonna have a big crop again. This is one of my favorite persimmons for sure. All right. Makes an amazing cheesecake. Let's go this way. And I think we'll walk, um, oh, here's another Solovatsky pomegranate, full of flower. This is great wall persimmon. This is a native elderberry. And this is just a seedling, but we like it because we think it's going to be about three weeks earlier ripening. Right now we're just calling it number four, but we will probably name it soon. And uh, there's the flowers there. This is some of our plants that we sell. Um, there's chestnuts on the end, and then there's some um, black walnuts. There's some Japanese heart nuts. Uh, then we go on here, some pomegranate fig, here's some filberts. And hey, it's June, we still got plants. <laughs> Not many people do that sell fruit. This is honey sweet pear. You can see it's got a good set on it this year. Uh, we've got some uh, lilies growing underneath from Andre Viet Nurseries. He gifted me these once when we talked. And then this is a gooseberry. I just planted a John's Prairie. I thought, oh yeah, it just planted, so it was in a gallon container, but it does have one fruit there, and that'll be turning red. Yeah, and there's another one right there. Over here is one of my favorite mulberries, and this is called Girardi, and you can see the fruit in there. Again, this is a nice one to pick with an umbrella. There's a fruit right, there's a perfectly ripe fruit right there. And that's Girardi, and they're a pretty good size. Now over here is green tea, or black tea, whatever your persuasion. And these, these are actually too big to pick, but come around here, I'll show you what I picked last night. And these are in the dehydrator at the moment. So I pick little, little leaves like this. And I dry them, to, today I'm drying them at 90 degrees. 110 kind of burnt them, so there you go. These will flower and the bees love them in the fall. Can you get a little shot right there of the, of the Girardi? Nice, nice. So this, this uh, pomegranate came, it's, uh, we call it uh, Macedonia, and it came from uh, near, near Greece but on the main, on the European mainland. And I, this is the first year that it's actually set flowers, so we finally get to taste this guy, and I'm pretty excited about it. This is um, an apricot uh, that salt plums are made of, uh, out of. This is um, called an umi, umbashi pe uh, plum paste, right? And here's the fruit and there is a way that you can uh, ferment these and salt plums and they're a delicacy in Japan, very popular. The, the, it's an apricot, so it has these beautiful white flowers and then we have one that has double pink flowers. Um, but these are not sterile forms, these are ones that fruit. Let's go down and look at the uh, Carmen Jewel bush cherry. It's like somebody ripped the uh, netting here. Whoops. So this is Carmen Jewel and you can see all the uh, the fruit, and they are just about ready. What do you think, Jeannie? Yeah, over there think? I see a bunch of red, red ones. Mmm. Very nice. Very that beautiful. One, that one, Mark? And it's a, it's a little bush, but it has all these great cherries. And I know that people in the United States are used to the, you know, the big sweet cherries. They're just a little bit more challenging here to grow, whereas these are pretty, you know, just very easy. You can see that one over there too with all the with all the fruit on it. Right? It's a delicious cobbler. That makes a delicious cobbler, yeah. Green jade. And 
I know there's some fruit on it because I saw it yesterday. There's one up. Oh, here they are. They're around the corner here. It's a young tree, but it's got plenty of fruit on this side. And of course, they'll be ripened. Uh, they'll, they'll ripen up in August. But there you go. And then just look at this. Um, this is Yadkin blueberry. Just look at all the fruit, huh? Beautiful plant. Beautiful. This is Dazu Lee pear. It's a, it's a small tree. Doesn't get that. Uh, this is pretty much mature. Doesn't get that tall. But uh, big fruit, very large fruit. You can see it's, it's quite um, loaded with fruit this year. And it's an Asian pear, so very crunchy when ripe. See them in there? So this is beach plum. Usually they don't get plum curculio, but I do see that they've gotten some plum curculio this year because uh, they usually bloom so late. But they get about as big as a cherry. Um, and that's good because in the kitchen you can take a cherry pitter and you can pit the pits out because they're, you know, they're just like a plum pit. Um, and then you have the, the fruit. And I actually had the fruit in, in fruit salad this year because we freeze them. And um, every day I make something, some kind of concoction and bring it to work. And I think I can show you a pawpaw over here. This is the sunflower variety. And I did see a fruit on this one, but not many. Again, I think the frost got us. Ah, here we go. A little baby pawpaw. You got it? This young tree is a Layla star. And it is uh, self-fertile sweet cherry. And this is the first year that it's fruited. Not a whole lot of fruit, but it's still a young tree. And let's see. Oh, I see a darker one over here. And we'll let the cameraman try that one. <laughs> so this is Nanking Cherry White. And this is a variety that uh, we've selected. and very happy with it right next to it is a red cherry um, and these little fruits quite sweet well sweet for a tart cherry I'll put it that way thank you for coming on the tour now we're gonna probably have a talk um, oh we would have had a talk right now and we'd be eating some persimmon cheesecake uh, by Jeannie but uh, today it's just me and you and thank you so much for for uh, coming on the tour and it's a, it's a wonderful, wonderful day. Thank you.